I love chewing bitter cola. Um, there are many people that will run away from chewing such a thing because of the taste, because the taste is actually not sweet. But it, it gets to a time that you chew the bitter cola and it becomes more sweeter than biscuits. How many of you have entered that realm? Okay, it, it's actually a realm. <laughs> a time comes that you chew bitter cola and it begins to taste more sweeter than biscuit or juice in your mouth. I also have entered, I've transitioned into that realm. Now, when we are talking about concentration, we are not talking about the things that are seemingly sweet to the ears. Because concentration is something that places a demand. Concentration is one thing that places a demand. And every most believers are more comfortable with receiving from God. But when there is a demand, that's where they run. Concentration places demand. We are going on a far journey this morning, so I'll maximize my time. So, consecration is one thing that places demand on you. You see, when you see the Christ, when you see Jesus, you see him as both um, Lord and what? Okay, you call the personal savior good. Those are two different offices. Jesus, as the Christ, is the one that has saved you. Is the anointed deliverer. He has delivered you from sin. He has saved you. He has redeemed you by the token of his own blood. Not of works. Now, that is the office of the Christ. It is a place you need to rest. It's a place you need to enjoy. But when we talk about the office of the Lord, the man comes in. And in that office of the Lord, that's where we can find consecration. Many people are happy to talk about the Christ that can save and deliver. But there is also the Christ that is a Lord. When we are talking about Lord, Lord is synonymous with governor. It's synonymous with um, a head. There are many synonyms you can use for that. The Lord will demand many things from you. So you may desire to go this way. The Lord will say, no, this is not where I want you to go. That is the Christ as the Lord. So many people are more comfortable with Jesus as the Christ. But when we talk about the office of the Lord, that is where many people want to draw back. They want to draw back. The rich young ruler easily came to the Christ. But when the Christ wanted to play lordship over him, he ran away. Hallelujah. Jesus preached several messages. Several people followed the multitude. If you, if you know the disciples of Christ to be only 12, then you have not studied. They were categories of disciples. They were those in their multitudes. They were the 70 which you find in Luke chapter 10. They were the 12 which you find in Matthew chapter 10. But a time came in John chapter 6, Jesus had preached and preached. And the people got offended with him. Because he told them something that was a demand. And the Bible said from that time they left him. And only the 12 remained. And he turned to them I said, will you not also go away? And Peter said to him, To whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. So when we talk about consecration, consecration is one thing that the average believer runs away from because they love comfort. It's a generation that loves comfort. It's a generation that wants to go their own way. It's a generation that wants to receive Jesus and tell Jesus how they want to live their life. It's a generation that wants to serve God in their own condition, in their own terms and conditions. Consecration has high demands. And when we talk about consecration, we are talking about the narrow way message. Because it's a message that many wayfarers run away from. That part is a narrow part. It's a narrow part that doesn't need bogusness. Many people run away from that. When we talk about the Jesus that can credit our account now, everybody will, oh my God. Here, here, here we scatter. Or maybe they start doing miracle alerts. Everywhere we jump. But when you start telling them that there is something God is demanding from them, oh my God. Oh my God. Man of God, in, in the course of ministry, I have lost several people as a result of demand. The last one I lost 
was a very great blessing to my ministry every month. And then she came to me and said, man of God, that there is a man that wants to marry her. I said, okay, tell me. Because I had already picked into the spirit and seen the error already. I said, tell me because I know that God is not even interested. She now said, let me calm down first. That the guy has already divorced his wife. So, the guy now wants to come. And indeed, the guy has not really divorced that woman. He just left the woman somewhere. And this lady, because she is desperate, she said, no, I said this is not the way. Don't go there. God is not with you. From that day, the woman stopped chatting with me. From that day, every commitment she had to her ministry, she ran away. Because there was a demand. You know, you can decide to say, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, until you reach the junction of marriage, and God tells you that that girl that is very fine, that you love so much, that she is not your wife. And God tells you that she does not have the purpose of his kingdom at heart, and that she is not the one that will journey with you. It's that time you begin to know whether you have started walking with God. Consecration places high demands. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 As many as are led by the Spirit of God Not as many as congregate and shout hallelujah Not as many as congregate and dance Not as many as congregate and, and, and have performances on the altar It is as many as are led by the Spirit of God They are the sons of God. Romans 8.14 If you want to know sons of God, they are those that are led. So, if you lead yourself, you can't be a son in the kingdom. Sonship deals with government. Submission. You no longer own yourself. And when Jesus talked in all the gospels concerning carrying the cross, in the gospel of Luke, he said, you will carry your cross daily. It was on a daily basis daily basis because there are special instructions God will have for you that he may not have for the other person but it takes maturity for you to be able to discern the voice of God and follow his instructions because as many as are led by the spirit of God the ultimate consummation of consecration is being led by the spirit walking in the spirit so when we talk about consecration, what do we mean by consecration? Consecration means a dedication to worship and to service. Dedication to worship and to service. It's not only in the king, it's not only in Zion that men are consecrated. There are also men consecrated in Babylon. There are native doctors. We call them native doctors in Nigeria. Other parts of Africa, they call them witch doctors, sangomas. Which doctors are also consecrated in their altars. They have a deity they submit to. And what they do is that they follow the beatings of that deity. The deity may tell the witch doctor, you will never for all the rest of your life eat a food cooked by a woman. And some of them do it. Because they want to be loyal to that thing they serve. So that they can have connection. But in the kingdom, we run away from God's demands. Consecration deals with dedication. Dedication. Dedication to service. Dedication to worship. Dedication. You know, many believers don't know that consecration is actually a faculty of our call. It's the faculty of our calling. We have departments. I love what you're playing. Take it low a bit. Low a bit. Reduce the bit. But continue playing that. It deals with dedication. Loyalty. Dedication to serve. And when we talk about consecration, I just told you now that consecration is a faculty in itself. And in the kingdom, we have things like prayer, isn't it? Huh? Talk to me. We have things like holiness, isn't it? We have things like service, isn't it? All of these, they are all inside the 
faculty called consecration. Consecration is that you are dedicated to him. You no longer belong to yourself. Go to any shrine. Anything you see there, any image you see there has been dedicated to that idol. When the witch doctor is coming to make oblations, he will sprinkle blood on every item in that place because they have been consecrated to that demon. So you will not be surprised that you go and touch even a cup in a shrine and it is shocks. Because there is something powering it. It has been dedicated. So in, in, the, in the faculty of consecration, you must know that your vessel has been dedicated to the Almighty. That you are no longer yourself. You, you don't own yourself. Paul wrote to the church in Rome, in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He said, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So you are now a living sacrifice. You are a living sacrifice. You are a sacrifice yet living. You will no longer belong to yourself. Present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable. He said, for this is your reasonable self. And then in verse 2, he said, Be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you notice something in that verse 2 of Romans chapter 12, you will see that God has actually given us one and God is expecting one. In the one of the spirit, God regenerates your spirit. When you come to him, he regenerates your spirit man. You become a new man. That's what we call born again. Rebirth. Regeneration. Regeneration in, in the sense that man was generated in Eden. A man fell, so God has to regenerate man through Christ. So, in that verse 2, he said, Be not conformed to this to the pattern of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, the renewing of your mind is now your own duty. It becomes your own duty to function, it becomes your own duty to do. By the time you begin to meditate on the word of God, stay on the wall. You begin to find out that you are transformed, you are changed into that image from one level of glory to another. That is how to renew the mind. So, consecration cannot actually be functional in the life of a believer that doesn't know the way of the, way of the word of God. Consecration is a demand. It's a call to a higher life. It's a call to a higher life. Do you know that? few days ago i was just in the room i was in my meditation table on my meditation table and the voice of god spoke to me i heard it clearly he said meditate on consecration this morning i said okay so after my morning study i was now to go to that meditation before i went to the meditation i went to check a message and that's when dr jeff sent me a message and said he would like me to teach on concentration 100% accuracy. The exact thing, go, and it was the first time I was to do a study on consecration this year. The voice said consecration, so I was ready for the teaching. So I wanted to respond to some things and I saw that message. Consecration. I said, okay, this is the finger of God. If you run away from anything in God and you run away from consecration, then you will have problems. Because you know what? God will not be able to identify with you in that, being that he does not know you. You know those people who said, apart from me, I never knew. It's because they were not consecrated to him. Consecrated means that you have carried yourself, you have given to him. You are no more struggling with yourself there. You just submit as a living sacrifice. When it is in the shrine of a native doctor, that spirit takes over everything there. That's why you can look and see some image moving without the human hand turning it. You see some totem talking. You see some doll talking. The spirit has taken over. So when you are consecrated to God, the spirit of God takes over your vessel. The spirit of God takes over you. So even when you speak, it is not you, but the Lord speaking. Consecration is, is something that is a necessary and a fundamental functionary for the sustenance of the life of any believer. Do you notice where I'm standing now? It's elevated. Did you notice it? 
Do you know why the pulpit is actually elevated? Huh? The pulpit is elevated as a symbol. As a symbol of a higher life. In every setting, the pulpit is exalted above the pew. Because God expects the ecclesia to live a consecrated life. Yet, the one at the pulpit, he expects the man at the pulpit to be a much more concentrated, a deeper dimension of concentration. So, an exalted pulpit is not just literal like many people sit in the flesh. It means an exalted life. Quality of life. Character. Nature. So, those people that run away from consecration, they, they can dance their jazz in church and everything. But before you enter the pearly gates, oh my God. <laughs> Before you pass through that, those pearly gates, what is written in those books is according to the order of consecration. How consecrated to the great one were you in your days? Were you taking instructions by yourself? Or were you taking instructions from the one above? What counsels has God been giving you throughout the year? How many instructions have you followed so far? How many instructions? I remember ending of last year, I didn't have anything in my account. Nothing in my account. Then a particular man whom he was my client is in America. This man is even has a, a real estate company in America. He's from Delta State. The guy is doing very well. So in those early days when Bitcoin came to Nigeria, when Bitcoin, when Nigeria was knew about Bitcoin, I was trading. So I was selling. So I used to sell for the man. The man had made many frosters. So until he met me, it was until he met me that he now settled with me. So I was selling with I was selling for him at very good rates. Those times were when we were selling a bit a, one BTC for about um, three hundred and twenty thousand. Now the thing has risen to over nineteen million. Then when I sell a coin for the man, my rate was very good, so the man was always following. So when I started what I wanted to start for the Lord, the Lord gave me a consecration to follow. So I followed the consecration. And then I dropped BTC. That man now asked me why. I said, look at why. So after some years, that was last year, the man messaged me. said he has been observing my consistency. That he wants to bless the ministry. That I should send him account number. Then he called the amount he wanted to send in very large volume. I was very happy. I told my wife. And then the Lord told me clearly. He said, I don't want you to take the money. There's nothing wrong with the man. He's genuine. In fact, the man in Delta State, there are some villages that he did clear, not just grading, clear road, put solar lights everywhere. He's a known pharmacist. And God said, don't connect it. The thing pained me. I wanted to, but I know that I don't anymore belong to myself. I don't anymore belong to myself. When it was at the junction of marriage, the lady I would have married was not my wife. I so much wanted to marry the lady. But I could hear the great one say, this one is not your wife. You know, when you live a consecrated life, you don't take decisions anyhow. Your decisions are contingent upon the sayings of God. You, you, you know why you can wake up and watch pornography with your phone? Eh? It's because there is no life powered in, inside of you yet. You have not met him yet. You have not met him. You have not met him yet. That, that's why you can feel comfortable with the guy you are not married to. And you are not even going to fornicate to the guy. You even go to the guy's house and stay alone with the guy behind closed door. You, no, you are not doing anything. No. But just that secrecy alone. You, you, you don't have life yet. Because if you have life, the Holy One inside of you <laughs> will not allow you to stay there alone. Consecration is one thing most believers run away from. Concent you see consecration. Because we want to do things. You know, man is, man has so much pride locked up inside of him. He wants to order himself. He wants to do it as he, as he desires. David was a Ziklag and his family. He, he wanted to join to fight a battle but he left his family as Ziklag. Before he could come back, all of them had been kidnapped. 
and David was about to rise up and go fight against the Amalekites and he went to seek the face of God and God told him he said go overcome subdue and he went another battle David was to go he did not say okay God has told me years before let me go again and God told him no wait the sayings of God don't assume that what God said today that you should not do are you hearing me don't assume that what God said today you should not do that you should always be working on that particular instruction make sure you are updated with God make sure there is a time God will say stand still there is a time God will say go forward do you know at that place Moses stood with Israel when they when Pharaoh they were coming from behind look at the Red Sea look at mountains left and right Moses stood with Israel and Israel was complaining Moses said stand still and you shall see the salvation which the Lord shall wrought in you for the Egyptians you see today you shall see them no more do you know that stand still Moses told them was not the program of God Moses told them to stand still Moses now went to seek God God said why cries thou to me strike for to repart this Red Sea the program of God was to move forward but Moses wanted to stand still it was until Moses went to seek God that God said, go, don't, don't wait here. And Moses parted the rest of it and they passed. So Moses wouldn't have said, oh, God said, I should stand still. Let me stand still forever. No, make, you must be updated with God. It's just like you're using a software or, or an application. You must ensure that you update your application. Because the new versions may have some support that the old one does not have. Ensure that you have a lively work with God. That's what we call consecration. In consecration, we find prayer. In consecration, we find holiness. In consecration, we find faithfulness. If you're consecrated to God, you always wait on Him. You can't take decisions without waiting on Him. You can't transact in a day without waiting on Him. The Levite, it was said of them that the fire should be on the altar, burning day and night. The fire should not be put out. So the fire of your spiritual altar ought to be burning day and night and never to go out consecration you find holiness sincerity integrity if you're with me say amen if you're with me say amen look at numbers chapter 3 verse 12 i realize we've not read any scripture look at numbers 3 12 let me show you something numbers 3 11 and 12 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, listing, instead of all the firstborn that opened, instead of all the firstborn that opened the metrics among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. Somebody said the Levites shall be mine. Say it like a believer. Okay. The Levites, they were those who had that which pertains to priesthood. Listen to me. The tribe of Levites, others could do anything, but God said the, the Levites I am their own reward. So God took over the Levites as his own people so that he could bring out priests from the Levites. So all Levites were not all priests, but all priests must come from the tribe of Levi. I, I, are you following me? Huh? But there is something God now said here. He said, Therefore, the Levite shall be mine. Israel, or other of you can go where you want to go, but you see the, the Levites, I own them. The only thing that they should do is to follow me. I own the Levites. In the school of consecration, you must know that God is saying that you are mine. You are mine. So decisions you would take, you don't take them for your own selfish gain. You take them with the mind of the kingdom at heart. You take them under God's instruction. Your life, your work becomes powered by the sayings of God. He said the Levites are mine. They belong to me. And then First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 now said we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people called out of darkness. We have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we have been translocated from a kingdom to another kingdom. 
So that kingdom we now belong to has a lord and a governor over the kingdom. So he now owns all of you. So in consecration, we talk about dedication to service, dedication to worship. You can't be consecrated in life. You can't be consecrated if you don't serve God. It's not only about coming and singing, worship and praise. You must also serve in the kingdom. Consecration also demands that you serve. Somebody say, I must serve. Say it like you mean it. Consecration demands that you serve. One of the days in Abuja, we had a service in the morning and a particular boy ran to the church. So when he came, they told me about him. I went to see him. There, the boy told me that he injures himself. Like sometimes he will look for sharp instrument and start tearing his flesh. And start tearing his flesh. So I had one man there that was also a prophet. So I called him. We began to discern the guy. So we realized, I asked him that your grandfather was a native doctor, right? He said yes. Your father also, yes. You, have you started serving? He said no. I said okay, that's why. <laughs> something is calling your name. There, there's a location calling you to come and serve something. So until you go to serve that thing, or you identify with a kingdom that is higher than that one, you will not have rest. <laughs> the guy came to service with injuries on his body, life. Sometimes he will carry knife and just start cutting, let, let blood be coming out. It's a spirit that was powering him that day. The spirit was not only calling him to worship, but also to come and serve. Come and serve the God of your fathers. There are some of you that some things that your ancestors played with will be coming to torment you even in your dreams and you wouldn't know. It will take consecration to the great one in Zion for that affliction to stop. Many bondages. See, it's not just that you carry somebody, you conduct deliverance, you cast out devils and the person goes away. That's not complete deliverance. Complete deliverance begins when consecration begins. If the person is not consecrated, even if it is the, even if it is Rehabonki that lay hand on the person, that thing will still come back. So in consecration, you will not locate a higher one and go to serve him. I remember those days on campus, we dedicated ourselves to an idol called Kurufu, a side forest. We were dancing around fire. We took blood oaths as cultists on campus. We told the Kurufu that we are going to serve it. From that time, I began to see that deity appear to me in my visions of the night. And when I got born again, when I began to serve Jesus, that deity appeared to me. In the realm of the spirit, I received a slap. Oh my God. <laughs> they, they gave me a slap that woke me up. A heavy slap. When I woke up, I now know that I have a real warfare. Now, these guys are coming physically to look for me to kill me. They're spiritually also. That thing I dedicated myself to. Because I did not, we did not do the one they do in hotel. We danced around. In fact, the first time they said the gods rejected us, I came back to say said that Kurofu must accept me. I told them that it must have, Wait. Oh God. I'm talking of things that if you die there, they will dig, shovel is there, they will dig ground, put you inside cover. I went back, they, my, my friend that went with me the first time, I carried him on the back after the whole thing when they said the gods rejected. I said, Korofo must, I'm ready to serve Korofo. It must accept me. And when I went the second time, it accepted me. And then when I now got born again, oh my God, I knew I had battles. Battles. This one is not battles caused by fathers now. It was this I took myself it. I began to see battles. That was when I knew the way of prayer. It was those days that I would lock myself up. I would make it myself three hours. If I've not grown out, I don't come out. I will grow like three hours. And then when I see myself appear in the realm of the spirit, if those people are coming, they see me, they'll start running. And physically, in my final year, God told me to go and live in their headquarters in Bishop's Court. I went to live in Bishop's Court. They knew me. So when they see me coming, they will just clear road. But I'm talking about people that if you denounce them, they will come and kill you. It's not a joke. So I conquer them in the spirit and in the flesh. When they see me, they give way. When they see me, literally. Sometimes, I remember one day they were beating a particular guy, a huge guy. They told him to lie there. Immediately I was coming. From far, they told the guy to stand up. As I was about to say, Pastor, welcome home. 
When an hour passed, they told the guy, come on, lie down. So they pretended because the, the Bible said the fear of Jacob was upon all the countries wherein he sojourned. They were afraid of him. I had to conquer that thing from the spirit realm down to the physical. I knew that I needed to serve God or die. There are many things, listen, apart from transactions your father's had, I'm talking about territorial spirits also. Paul talked about different ranking of spirits in Ephesians chapter 6. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And then Paul began to tell us about our weaponries in the spirit, our spiritual armor. He told us about the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness. He told us about the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace. He talked about many amos and then he talked about the one that they called the sword of what the sword of the spirit there was a belt of truth there was a sword of the spirit the sword of the spirit was the only offensive weapon of attack others had to defend but there is a sword of the spirit to attack i'm not here to talk about the armor of god but in the armor of god and they call the belt of truth many people don't wear that belt in the belt have you seen a soldier with that belt how can the soldier run Many people without the belt of truth are those that are living a lie. So in the realm of the spirit, when you look at your armors, you don't have belts. Because you are living a lie. Everything about you is fake. When things about you are fake, you are not putting on the belt of truth. You need belt to have balance. Then we talk about the sword of the spirit, wherein you can launch offensive against the enemy. Many don't have the sword of the spirit. Consecration has not driven you to be able to sit down with the word of God one hour. But you can stay on social media and browse for 24 hours. But when you sit with the word of God, 30 minutes you are sleeping. You know what? You are still far. Joshua 1 verses 8 said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mightest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. The meditation is day and night something. But let's leave day alone. What about night? You open your day with social media, you end with social media. You think it is well. The man can even prosper in the flesh. But you know what? The man will have no spiritual ranking. No Demons cannot obey that man. In 2 Corinthians 10 from the start, he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination and every high thing that is against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Having in readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Many people cannot avenge disobedience in the spirit because the obedience is not complete. It's not about casting demons. Do you have authority to cast them? I have a particular brother that demons will appear to him. He used to see them physical. When they come, they will start beating him. He will shout, Jesus. They will be dancing, saying, Jesus. The demons will be dancing. This is not a joke. He will say, Jesus. Some of them will say, Jesus. So they will be doing like this. John chapter 6 said, the flesh profited nothing. It is a spirit that quickens. That's why you can find all court men on the altar called Jesus. And nothing is happening. It is a spirit that quickens. It was when that guy touched God. That those demons appeared one day when he shouted jesus three of them made obeisance and said jesus is lord he shouted it three times they said jesus is lord and they disappeared they never came back to him because his obedience became complete your obedience cannot be complete when you still live in fornication it cannot be complete your obedience cannot be complete when you can't hear god and do what god is saying the obedience cannot be complete and when your obedience is not complete demons cannot listen to your words the sons of Skiva, their father was a high priest. He was like, he was like a president of Khan. So they thought they could hide under the, under, under the bishopric of their father. And they went to cast out the demon. They went to do exorcism. And the demon dealt with seven able-bodied men. I, I did not seven. Seven of them dealt with, with them. And the demon said to them, that Peter, we, we know Peter. We, we know Jesus. You, we, we don't know you. We don't know you. Say, Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, but who are you? Who are you? You can't have an identity in the spirit when you're not consecrated. Consecration is a call for the last day church. Because according to Ephesians chapter 5, he is coming for a church without spot and wrinkles. 
For you to have no spot and wrinkles is that you have submitted yourself to the great one. You are not submitting and still retreating. You have submitted and stayed with him. Fire, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire burn upon my altar. Holy fire, holy fire, holy fire burn upon my altar. Somebody say, holy fire. There's something the fire may need to burn. Listen to me. When we talk about God's fire, God's fire does different things. There's a sanctifying fire. The ones that refines and purifies the silver. Then according to Hebrews 12, 29, there is a judgmental fire. That says, Hebrews 12, 29 says, the Lord our God is a consuming fire. There's a fire that cleanses, there's a fire that judges. If you run away from the fire that purifies, you will not run away from the fire that judges. Many people don't know the definition of hell. You, you, you know we, oh my God. If we do a study, I will show you that hell is not the end of sinners. The end of sinners is the lake of fire. Hell and death was cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Into the lake of fire. What is that lake of fire? That is moving like molten magma. Boogum, 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 boogum. I like to know my time, please. The lake of fire, like a fire with a heartbeat. Oh my God. How many of you have seen volcano eruption? Huh? How many of you have seen volcano eruption? The sight is not something you should behold. And that is where God poured his wrath. Have you gotten angry before? That you wanted to kill somebody? You saw your heart was beating. No. No. <laughs> that was how God carried his wrath and poured into a place called the lake of fire. And those that run away from the refiner's fire those are running away from the purifying fire. Oh my God. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hand of God. It is very terrible. And he said, judgment begins from the house of God. When we talk about consecration, it's not about I'm a pastor, I'm a title holder. Those things don't count. They don't count. What counts is are you consecrated to him? Have you known the Lord and is he known of you? Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 that I press forward toward the mark of the price calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said that I may apprehend that which apprehended me. You are, you, you are not even hungry. Paul had done ministry, planted churches in Ephesus, in, throughout Asia Minor, many miracles, raised the dead, gone to places that they wanted to worship him as a deity. After many years of ministry, Paul still came back to say that I may know him more. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. Philippians 3 verse 10. A man of that stature came and said that, that I may know him more. You see, you, you, are, you, you are not hungry. You are not hungry for him. Consecration will begin at that junction of hunger. Matthew chapter 5 said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger is the beginning of all righteousness. If you're not hungry for God, all these things we are saying will fall on deaf ears. You will do here. It takes hunger for you to activate consecration. It takes hunger to activate consecration. It takes hunger. Many things we are doing now is in the flesh. Many things we are doing is in the flesh. Many of us want to where people please us. I had someone that was a people pleaser in my assembly then. And the Lord was telling me some things about his life. I told him, look at what God is saying. But he was denied. Until the Lord exposed him. That somebody that is leading prayer as a prayer fireman, the guy he was doing his transaction with came to report and he could not deny it. And the transaction is something that should not be had by the ears. It's a generation that loves activities. Activities. God is calling the ecclesia to consecration. Before God appeared to Israel, every time God will say, Moses, tell the people to sanctify themselves, I'm coming. Before God comes, the people must be sanctified. Before Jesus comes to pick the church, he's coming for a church that has been sanctified. It's not a church that has the biggest money in account. Study the seven churches in Asia. The last church was the Laodicea. Do you know what Jesus said about the Laodicea? He said, you think you are rich. 
you think you have increased in goods that you have need of nothing but he said i counsel of thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire for thou art naked and knowest not the lord they say and brag that they have everything they have all the excellence they have branches everywhere their accounts oh they can borrow but jesus said i have many things that like you are naked you don't have the garment of righteousness when we talk about consecration we talk about righteousness see holiness means set apart to god you have been set apart holiness to god. the righteousness talks about moral uprightness some licentious grace teachers will begin to teach you how that god is not demanding moral righteousness because they have not studied scriptures because there are two kinds of righteousness there's imputed righteousness there's imparted righteousness imputed righteousness is the one you didn't do anything but jesus took on his nature and put he took on that white clothes and removed your black cloth and gave you that's imputed righteousness and imparted righteousness you need to now live at that life as an evidence that this is what jesus did so when you're seeing a man not showing that fruit, it means that he has not received that imputed righteousness. Any gospel that does not place demand on your soul is not the gospel of, of the Christ. The gospel must place a demand. Because it must stop you from some places you are going. It must stop some relationships. I know a particular man of God then in Abuja. I used to preach at um, Asokoro Mountain there steady different it was a mountain experience and the lord will always tell me to tell the man of god look at what you should do and the man of god was taking the words for granted one day we finished evangel we, we, we finished program at apple mighty powerful program everywhere was shaking we went to program and a girl was inside his room i said man of god, look at this guy inside your room this is not right he said no that's the secretary i know that as he is he has overgrown that he has grown to a level that those things don't move him i understood that flesh was speaking I said, man of God, this is not the way. He said, let me calm down. And they said, holy, holy. He just kept me aside. I said, no one. That was the last time I went to his house. I said, I can't keep company with such. Do you, do you know the last thing I heard about the young man? That on one occasion, two different guests came to the house that he impregnated. And he ran away from the house. Two girls came and said he impregnated them. Two girls. And when we talk about the demands of consecration, he will say, I don't want to do holy, holy. I'll be with somebody now. The person will carry phone and say he's, he's in the mountain praying now. But we are not on the mountain. It's because some men on the pulpit have become too familiar with God. That they assume that they can joke in his name. Consecration is a call. It's a call that you must answer. It's not that you came to altar and God bought you again. That, see, you just began a journey. Are you hearing me? Eh? Do you know what it means to enter a car? You enter a car, doesn't mean you're driving the car. When you enter the car, you have not started driving. You just enter. Our other call is that you just enter the car. <laughs> you enter the car called, called Christ. You now need to learn how to navigate. You can enter a car, but yet don't know how to drive the car. You need to learn how to drive the car. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Many of you enter the car, you don't know how to drive the car, and the next thing you do is that you come down. That's what happened to several people. They enter the car, they don't know how to drive, and they go. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 said, To be governed by the flesh is death. To be governed by the flesh leads to death. But to be governed by the spirit is life and peace. If you read King James, it said, To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8, verse 6. So if flesh is what is governing you, it is leading you to eternal death. If your flesh is what is controlling you, I know a particular young guy that told me in my parlor in Abuja there, that as he is now, the girl he wants to marry must be Coca-Cola ship. Whether she is Holy Ghost feed or not, whether she is born again or not, if she does not have Coca-Cola ship, he will not marry. I looked at the young man and said, but you are far. First of all, I think you need to get born again. But the guy I'm talking about, even when we're on campus, he preaches more than me. We will go to ninth class and wake up in the morning before I want to preach in that ETF. The guy has started preaching. Every time he, he, he is always the first. And then he said, the, Whether you are born again, if you don't have to have shape, forget it. You see a man that has his own will. That cannot, even Jesus had Gethsemane. He said, Not my will, but die. The cup was too heavy. 
He said, no, 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 no. He said, nevertheless, not as I will. Not as, a consecrated man knows the way of submitting his will for the will of the divine one. You have not known how to submit your will. Anything you want to do. You know, we have built a church, a kind of system that is afraid of what they call the will of God. When you are the will of God, you are not afraid. Yeah. That God wants to kill you. No. God does not. He wants to give you life. He said, I know the thoughts I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. The will of God is perfect. Read Romans chapter 12. The, the will of God is good, perfect, and acceptable. But when you hear the will of God, you run away. Because it's not his spirit that is driving you. The Lord wants to raise a consecrated people. Because of time, I will not go ahead. I have many things to say, but let me end here. Consecration is a call. Not just a call, but a higher call. In consecration, there are some people that you begin to move it. And God will say, that relationship, I am not there. And because you had the law, you know, you retreat. Because you don't own yourself. Because you have not just met a Christ that saved you, you have also met a Lord. A Lord is a governor that you become his servant. You know, we are friends of God. You should also know we are also servants. If you assume that you are just a friend of God and you are not a servant, you will make mistake. You will go your own way. Even God called Abraham his friend. But Abraham did not call God his friend. A generation of people now that say, oh, God is my friend. God is my... Abraham did not call. It was God. Allow God to call you his friend. But these men knew they were servants of the Lord. Dedicated lawyer. Rise up on your feet. The first body we will cry for is a holy fire to burn. There are some things the fire needs to purge. There are some things inside of you that if you continue this journey, it will destroy you. You need a fire to visit it. Holy fire burn up on my altar. You see, you are not even praying. Lift up a cry and say, Holy fire. Visit my vessel. Porch. You know, some of you need porching. You don't know what it means to porch. When you porch, trust, toxin leaves your system. There are spiritual toxins that need to leave you. Holy fire. Fire. Bada, bada, bada. Holy fire burn upon my altar. Holy fire. Holy fire. Can you tell God in sincerity how far you have been from Him? How dirty you have been on the inside? Imagine staying and the only thing that comes to your mind is thought of sex when you have scriptures to study. Holy. I talked about hunger, but I'm seeing some of you are not hungry. <laughs> some of you are not. I pray that it will not take you five years to understand what I'm saying. You need to lift a cry to God. Oh. Say, Lord, see, I have not been consecrated. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. If we finish all our activities and yet we are not consecrated, on that day, Jesus will say, I never knew you because you did not come to me. You did not remain in me. Holy fire. Refine us fire. I am never not there. Holy Fire burn upon my altar. Holy fire. Holy fire. I am under Holy fire. In the secret place, I cry for the fire to burn upon my altar. It's a serious prayer. This is not power. This is not fire to manifest now. Fire to burn off unrighteousness. To burn off draws of rebellion. So much rebellion needs to leave your system. I wish Judas prayed a prayer like this. He would not have betrayed the Christ. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Lift up the cry. Akapataka vetehai. Shatakapakatakatua. Ekwanta tatarata bakataila. Red de 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 de
Let it be hard that today was a day you consecrated to God. Let it be today. Let it be said that today you truly gave your life to Jesus and didn't take it back again. A covenant carrier. Rabba baba 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 dia eko ra baba eko ra dada made o sadi akabobe i akabanda o atala o atala mo de via i shada babobe le prende kasusa ai come me de dia lo perreke tenga zone menako menadola perreke 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 rata dada 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 Say fire of God, sit upon me. Sit upon me like the refiner's fire. Sit upon me. Sit upon my head. Kapa ba 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 ba, reke ba de ba de kadiyo. O kapa do shoto kapa, shoto kapa, shoto kapa le. Le ba de kesusa, loa dada, loa dada. You are not praying. You are not praying. Make sure you touch God this moment. I kapa de kesusa, la tua dada. Rakako, 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 reke de de de, liga swa dada. Lebendo, 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 Lebendo. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Malachi chapter three, verse three. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. When God does not purify us, we can't offer an offering in righteousness. Let's lift up our hands. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that we be purified indeed. We be purified indeed. Say, I am purified indeed. Say, I am purged indeed. And I will bring forth offerings to God in righteousness. If the offering is not in righteousness, God does not accept. The Lord helps us with grace today. Say, I receive grace today to offer offerings in righteousness as a consecrated vessel to God. Help me, O oh God. Begin to appreciate the Lord. 